shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, we are preparing for the Feast of Palm Sunday, or Passion Sunday. The first refers to the royalty of a palm. The second to the symbol of triumph over death. And therefore, it is blood that becomes part of the red that we wear, along with the royalty of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's passion Paschal mystery, that is to say, of the passion and resurrection. For it was, by, was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches. may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Je when Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered, tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt the fold of the beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceded him, and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna! to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For a moment we will reflect upon this fact that there is great contrast on this day in the liturgy. There is this coming of the royal king and saying, Hosanna, which means save us. And of course they meant, the crowds, that they were to be saved in liberation from the Romans. And so their idea of salvation was quite different from what was really beginning to happen. So that's what makes the contrast, what some people thought, and those were the same who, on Friday after this event, 
would yell, crucify him. So you understand the fickleness of these people and that they are sort of petty politicians in their own right and they expected so little of Jesus. And so as we look upon this then, we find these contrasts coming, especially in the readings that we hear, for the suffering and death of the Lord is coming ahead. And we should remember at this time of, uh, of, of crisis in our world that we too do not know what this week will bring us. And so in many ways, we are following very closely in the footsteps of Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we will have the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, my God, my God why, why have you abandoned me? All who seek me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue, rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why are you abandoning me? I will pro proclaim your name to my brothers. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking a form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, 
of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? And they only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the parading and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Syrian named Simon. This man was pressed into service to carry the cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. And they had crucified him. They divided his garments by casting lots. Then he sat down, and they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head 
the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So, he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lebethop, Shabbatani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elisha. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Yeah. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated, please. This is a day of contrast, and that's why the liturgy of this day has its place. And we know that we live at a time of contrast, too, where the peace that we had last year is not here this year, with the crisis that we are facing on the coronavirus. I had a call yesterday morning, and I thought it would be important to talk to you about it. My nephew, Matthew, is a, is a doctor in a major California hospital. And he was wanting to know what should he say when these people come in because he's the one that anesthetizes them and he has an important role to play. And he is many times the last person that talks to an individual before they die. What should he say? And so the response, of course, is the first thing you say is, Lord, help me to yourself. And the second thing, say something to them. And if the Lord moves you to say something else, do that. But if not, at least say something like this. I want to thank you, Lord, for all you've given me in this life. I know I wasn't perfect, and in some ways, I need to be forgiven. Still, I want to show my appreciation to what you have done and given me life. 
He doesn't have much time to say anything. But I feel something that shows gratitude is the most important because we at this time, in the face of the fact that we are dying at large numbers and having sickness in large numbers in this country and the world, should always show gratitude to God through it all. Thanksgiving for what we have had and what we have right now. So this thanksgiving that we need to show is of utter importance and it is, should be our attitude, not that we deserve something else or that why is this happening to me? Because it is happening and we know it. But more than that, we also have to show this to be an opportunity. An opportunity for us, it's not an ordeal, which is sort of a primitive way of saying I can endure it and if I don't, then that was not my good luck. But it's an opportunity to do what the Lord wants us to do. Our Jerusalem type of journey is upon us. Zion is for us the church. And as being the church, we realize fully that we have to go through our sufferings in order to come to glory. And so in many ways, this week might be the time that the first for a number of years, I think maybe the last one was 78 years ago for an Easter event when the nation was in crisis. It was only four months after Pearl Harbor and I can still remember it very well that we were very excited because we didn't know what was gonna happen. The Japanese were marching in large numbers and they were ready to overtake all the Philippines at that time. Bataan and Corregidor was ready, they were ready to fall. And in the other end of the world, the Nazi armies were marching across North Africa and we wondered if the British could stop them before the Suez Canal. Unknown, and that Easter was one of the harder Easter's of my life. And we remember it well because our nation was in trouble. In some ways, I think the one we have now is greater because we were there united fully in fighting something that had come upon us quickly. And now something that comes upon us quickly, well, some people do not take it to be what it really is. And they've let it go too long. And we know that we as a people have got to do something now and become one people, one brother and sisterhood that is upon our world. We've got to do that. That is what we're called to do. And we know also something more. We know that we are powerless among ourselves in what we can do. We can stay indoors. We can keep from having, have a social distance and have a social distance from others. But there's something more. We need God in our life and in our world. We cannot do this alone. Being together with others is not perfect. We need God too. And it all has to be part of what we're to talk about in the coming weeks, and especially during Holy Week. Let's remember that. This is the opportunity of our life to come together and to show our powerlessness in ourselves, but our power in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is to rise from the dead. It is through powerlessness and understanding and still looking to the Lord, can we find the power to rebuild our world. We need this very much in the day in which we live. This day, Palm Sunday. Let us say our profession of faith together. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
Born of the Father before all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father. In him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin and became man. For our, our sake he was crucified and on the cross. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now remember the deeds of the church and of the world at this moment. For all those who suffer in the corona virus epidemic that we have at this time, and for their good and noble and courageous caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people throughout the world, especially the refugees and the children who do not understand what is happening and who are suffering very much because of it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each and every one of us, that we might be able to see this as a time of retreat, a period of quietness, a time when we are not bothered by others, and that we can give some time to the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who show their gratitude for what God has given them, and our life even to this day, and that we may always continue to thank God for what we receive, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are persecuted, especially those who are persecuted in the Church of North Korea and parts of Africa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation's leaders and for our governors and for our local <clears throat> county judges and others and mayors, for all of these, and the courage that they must have in the coming weeks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we will continue to beg God to remove this affliction from us as soon as possible, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, hear these and the prayers that we have in our hearts. Help us that we might raise these to you in a spirit of humility and thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be, be God forever. With humble spirit and comfort heart, we will be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accepts the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, 
May our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim the death of the Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs through eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine nature, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Amen. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. 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 May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us and receive. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. And mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the Lamb of my root, but I will say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe. Keep you safe from the curse. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection we, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you everyone who see, who are present, and who see this on our on the computer. And I